Elon Musk isn't the only one empire building. Let's discover how these American families control everything and have been at it for generations. The Walton family has a net worth of 247 billion US dollars and are the richest family in America thanks to their 50% stake in Walmart. By sales, the largest retailer in the world. They operate a mind-boggling 12,000 plus stores worldwide and have annual sales of $500 billion. That's something to think about when you're next in there picking up some bananas. With just over 2.2 million employees, Walmart is the world's largest private employer. Evidence of the Walton family fortune isn't hard to find. Outside of monarchies, this is one of the greatest fortunes ever amassed, and they have more money than Jeff Bezos, Bill Gates, and Warren Buffett. However, despite their fortune, the Waltons seem to live a pretty modest life, at least in public. Privately, you occasionally get a glimpse of their immense wealth, like when Walmart chairman Rob Walton trashed his rare Shelby Daytona Cobra. The car has been estimated to be worth as much as $15 million and was one of only five ever made. Heiress Alice Walton has been dubbed the world's richest art collector, which is a pretty cool title. She's known to have amassed a huge private collection, with original works from Andy Warhol and Georgia O'Keeffe. It's been valued upwards of 500 million US dollars. I'm guessing with that much money to play with, if this collector wants it, she's probably gonna get it. The Koch family has a net worth of 100 billion US dollars and are best known for their political activities and their control of Koch industries. The family are currently sitting on a real estate empire worth hundreds of millions of dollars and have purchased some of the most remarkable homes in the world. They currently have in their portfolio this sprawling New York townhouse worth 60 million US dollars situated in Park Avenue, New York's most exclusive address, apparently beating out Ukrainian billionaire Leonard Blavatnik for the unit. In 2018, the Kochs also purchased a Manhattan townhouse for 40.25 million US dollars. David Koch previously bought a seven-bedroom home on Meadow Lane, dubbed Billionaire's Lane, an ultra-exclusive enclave in the Hamptons for 7.5 million US dollars. These days, properties on Meadow Lane sell for well into the tens of millions. That's a nice return and view. Koch Industries was founded on black gold, but they're also known to manufacture paper, process minerals, create fertilizers, and are involved with refining oil. Basically, anything they can turn a buck out. And that's some buck. Heads of the family, brothers Charles and David Koch, are famously a bit of a black box when it comes to gaining information on the current sources of their huge income, but have been described as America's very own oligarchs. The Mars family has a net worth of 94 billion US dollars. I don't know what you're thinking. Surely that's not from Mars bars. But yes, the Mars family own Mars Inc., one of the world's largest candy and pet food companies, with annual sales of 40 billion dollars. As well as Mars bars, they own three Musketeers, Twix, and M&Ms. Speaking of, more than 400 million M&Ms are produced in the US every single day. Jacqueline Mars drives a top-of-the-range Porsche SUV, which can cost upwards of $100,000, and has a personal net worth of $2.4 million, about the size of 100 Donald Trumps. She has something of a penchant for horse breeding, too, and owns a 200-acre stud farm in Virginia. Farmland is priced at around $20,000 per acre, meaning her plot is worth around $4 million. Fusechi Pegasus currently holds the title for the most expensive horse in history, selling for a cool $70 million to the racehorse breeding powerhouse Coolmore Island. She also sits on the board of directors for the Washington National Opera, where the most expensive tickets are $748. That's an expensive night out. The Cargill Macmillan family, known as the American Grain family, has a net worth of $47 billion US dollars through the family firm Cargill Inc., which sells and markets food, trades commodities, and provides financial risk management. Agriculture, food, and related industries contribute around $1 trillion to the US GDP each year. Heiress Adriana Cargill was recently gifted a Venice starter home in LA, priced at $3 million. Now, by billionaire standards, to call this place tiny would be an understatement. It's got a footprint of just 2,618 square feet of living space and sits on an absolutely microscopic 0.6 acre lot. However, it's an easy breezy five minutes or less walk to the impossibly trendy Abbot Kinney Boulevard and only 10 minutes stroll to the beach. Plus it sits within a guarded gated community. Thus, it sold for a rather amazing $3 million. I mean, the place is nice and all, but if we had paid $3 million for a property, regardless of where it was, we wouldn't want to be worrying about storage space. 
There are approximately 90 family members that together own 88% of the company. According to Forbes, eight of the family members are billionaires. That must be some family gathering during the holidays. Queen's native Estee Lauder founded a cosmetics firm with her husband in 1946 after developing skin creams from her kitchen. Today, six billionaire members of the Lauder family own stake in the publicly traded company, which has 29 brands, including Mac, Origins and Clinique. Their net worth? 40 billion US dollars. From her kitchen. What was the last thing you made in your kitchen? A turkey sandwich? William Lauder is now the company's chairman and owns this house in Beverly Hills, valued at an eye-watering $30 million. The art-filled home has been described as a 21st century take on Southern California indoor-outdoor living. Yeah, we guess when your house looks like that, and it's in Beverly Hills, indoor or outdoor, it's all good. The concept for the Beverly Hills pad was essentially an exuberant update of Truesdale's signature single-story dwellings, with flatline roofs, deep overhangs, and wide expanses of glass that open up vistas and blur the lines between indoors and out. Architect Cantor Trish also craved a home that would be as inviting as it was glamorous. Modern houses can be cold, and I like houses to have heart and soul, she says. Leonard Lauder gifted his massive cubist art collection worth more than a billion dollars to the Metropolitan Museum of Art in 2013. The collection included multiple Pablo Picasso pieces. Next up, another family brand that we're sure you're all familiar with. The Wisconsin-based Johnson family owns cleaning products giant SC Johnson, which has estimated revenues of $10.5 billion and a net worth of $37 billion US dollars. Now here's one mouth-watering property. We're definitely not architects, but we'd probably describe this one as an alien invasion-inspired 14,000 square foot modernist masterpiece. Wingspread, also known as the Herbert F. Johnson House, is a historic house in Windpoint, Wisconsin, built in 1938 to 1939 to a design by legendary architect Frank Lloyd Wright for Herbert Fisk Johnson Jr., then the president of SC Johnson. It was considered by Wright to be one of his most elaborate and expensive house designs to date. The basic layout of the house is centered around the core living space, referred to as the Great Hall on the floor plans, with four wings extended, forming zones for the family. These include the master's bedroom, children's rooms, kitchen and servants' quarters, and the guest rooms and garage. The gigantic dome of the living room features a tall stone shaft that rises from the center, housing a total of five fireplaces. We guess it must get chilly in such a massive house. This ginormous chimney structure further separates the house, dividing the living room into four spaces, entrance, living room, dining room, and library. The Boston-based Johnson family owns 49% of mutual fund company Fidelity, and has a net worth of 36 billion US dollars. Fidelity recently invested in Wheels Up, a provider of on-demand private jets, and one of the largest private aviation companies in the world. Now that's what we're talking about, hailing a PJ like it's an Uber. The cost of a Wheels Up membership is typically around $18,000 for a core membership, and then costs on top, blah, 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 keep the noise down, I'm calling a PJ. Fidelity has around $3.5 trillion in managed assets, making it the second largest mutual fund company after Vanguard. Abigail Johnson is the third generation of the family to run the company, and she owns a huge shingle-clad Massachusetts estate. An estate, not a house, an estate. Johnson loves the Bitcoin and blockchain, and latched on early as a personal amusement shortly after the cryptocurrency was launched in 2009. It was the topic of casual conversation because it was this weird novelty thing, she recalled. In 2013, Johnson and about eight to 10 work friends, techno general curiosity offbeat people who were interested in new stuff, she said, began to meet weekly, poking into it and trying to see if there was something tangible for the company. The value of one Bitcoin in 2013 was around $13. Nowadays, it's closer to a thousand. That's some nice return. The Cox family owns media and automotive company Cox Enterprises, which has around $21.1 billion in revenues and a net worth of $34.5 billion US dollars. Jim Kennedy, chairman of the board, owns a whopper of a property in Montana and got into a tug of war over public access to an eight mile, no connection to M&M we don't think, stretch of the Ruby River that runs straight through his property. Following Kennedy fencing the public out of the river with razor wire, 200 angry fishermen held a fish in and took a flotilla of boats through the billionaire's property in protest, trying not to laugh. 
Kennedy served as CEO from 1988 to 2008. Under his leadership, revenues rose from $1.8 billion to $21 billion. It's also said that Jim Kennedy was instrumental in helping to bring the Olympic Games to Atlanta in 1996. Now that is some influence. In December 2019, the family sold a majority stake in its broadcast stations to Apollo Global Management for a reported $3 billion. The Pritzkers, a powerful Chicago family, spent the 2000s feuding over trusts and eventually divvied up their massive fortune that includes the Hyatt Hotel chain. Their net worth? 32.5 billion US dollars. Hyatt is one of the world's best and most luxurious hospitality brands and was founded by Jay Pritzker in 1957. Park Hyatt Hotels are Hyatt's top tier luxury properties and every aspect of Park Hyatt's 40 hotels worldwide feature a carefully created experience. From the types of ingredients sourced in spa treatments to the style of art incorporated into its properties. You can find Park Hyatt brands around the world, from New York City to Dubai to Montevideo. One of our personal favorites is the Park Hyatt Tokyo, sitting on top of Shinjuku Park Tower. The Park Hyatt Tokyo was the first Western luxury hotel to open in Japan in 1994. Since then, numerous celebrities have called the Park Hyatt home. Director Sofia Coppola loved the hotel so much that she made it a centerpiece in her award-winning film Lost in Translation, starring Bill Murray. Okay, so the family has the money and the glamour. But where's the influence we hear you asking? Well, family member J.B. Pritzker became governor of Illinois in 2019, and his sister, Penny Pritzker, was Secretary of Commerce in the Obama administration. So there. Now, you might think that a print media empire is a bit old school, a bit Citizen Kane. But that's exactly where the Newhouse family fortune stems from and how they amass their net worth of 30 billion US dollars. And who doesn't love a media tycoon? Founder Sam Newhouse's two sons inherited the business. We know, very succession, right? Condé Nast is part of the brand and publishes Vogue, The New Yorker, Vanity Fair and newspapers in 24 US cities. Their group comprises over 120 magazines with a readership of over 54 million. Vogue editor Anne Winter has an annual salary of 4 million US dollars and is considered one of the most influential figures in the fashion industry. As well as print media, the family controls Reddit and a stake in Discovery Communications. In April 2016, Sam's son sold cable TV company Bright House Networks for $11.4 billion in cash and stock. I'm guessing there's not a subreddit for what the heck do you do with $11.4 billion? The Duncan family owns roughly one third of the stock in Pipeline Behemoth Enterprise Product Partners, co-founded by the late Dan Duncan in 1968 and have a net worth of $22 billion. Duncan founded gas and oil company Enterprise Products Partners in 1968 with just $10,000. After he died in 2010, the company remained under family control and his four children inherited a $10 billion estate. The family fortune has since more than doubled to over $20 billion. In 2007, Duncan was the richest person in the city of Houston and the third richest in the whole of Texas. And Texas is big, remember. He had a net worth of $8.2 billion. His children, Randa Duncan Williams, Melaine France, Deneen Duncan Navarra, and Scott Duncan inherited a $10 billion estate. Duncan owned the Double D Ranch, a 5,000-acre hunting property in Texas, and he was into hunting in a big way. Duncan was a Safari Club International member who has been given numerous awards for his hunting trophies. Duncan has 407 entries in SCI's trophy record book, including records for killing lions, elephants, rhinoceroses, a polar bear, and other animals. A taxidermy lion can cost upwards of $60,000. The Hearst family has a net worth of 21 billion US dollars. Hearst used to own what is now one of the most expensive homes in America. You might recognize it from a certain horse's head in the bed scene from The Godfather. William Randolph Hearst, who bought the estate for $120,000 in 1947, in declining health, spent his remaining years in the Beverly Hills house. The mansion is only three blocks from Sunset Boulevard and sits on 3.7 acres of property. The house was first publicly on sale for $165 million in 2007, but the price has fluctuated throughout the years. It dropped to 95 million in 2010, a steal, then went back up to 135 million in 2014. In 2014, it was taken off the market 
and leased at a rate of $600,000 a month, according to the Wall Street Journal. Now, the house is up at $195 million, making it tied for the most expensive home to be listed on the US market. The $200 million Playboy Mansion, though initially listed for more, sold for $100 million. The Brown family are considered the first family of bourbon, and is behind Jack Daniels, Woodford Reserve, and Old Forester, among other alcohol brands, and has an estimated net worth of 20.4 billion US dollars. The rarest bottle of Jack Daniels whiskey on the collector's market today is an ultra-rare collectible bottle that contains cloudy whiskey. It's from a 1955 vintage, aged five years and distilled into bottles in 1960, and still drinkable apparently, if you don't mind depriving the world of a treasure. It's priced at over $5,000, or over $200 a shot. Over 12 million 9-litre cases of Jack Daniels whiskey are sold across the globe annually. Liquor mogul Osley Brown built a sprawling Kentucky mansion that was recently up for sale for $6 million in Harrods Creek, an exclusive neighborhood of Louisville. The Avish, the stately Collins 20,000 square foot manor, was developed in 1910 by Osley Brown and his wife, Laura Leons. Construction on the home was completed in 1925. The name translates to Rocky Hill in Gaelic, which was the name of the family's ancestral home in Ireland. We'll drink to that. The Marshall family's wealth is diversified. J. Howard Brown II traded his Great Northern Oil Company shares for an estimated 15% stake in the Coke industries. Remember them from earlier? He passed on the stock to his son, E. Pierce Marshall, then went to his wife, are you following? And children when he died. The family has spent millions of dollars of their fortune on lawyers for J. Howard II, who had a short term, but were sure very fun. For him, marriage to Anne Nicole Smith, a former Playboy Playmate of the Year. Marshall met the bombshell in 1991 at Gigi's, a Houston strip joint. He almost immediately started paying her $4,000 a month for consulting. The home they shared for their brief marriage was recently on the market for a cool $2.44 million. The Cypress Estate sits on nearly 10 acres and offers unique amenities, such as a basketball court, a stable, putting green, indoor-outdoor kitchen, and a separate guest house. Florence Butt founded HEB Grocery Store in Texas in 1905, which her son Howard expanded throughout the state when he took over the company in the 1920s. The family's net worth? 17.8 billion US dollars. Son Charles is the majority shareholder and currently runs the company, which has 400 stores in Texas and Mexico and generates $25 billion in annual sales. Charles's siblings and two nephews also have stakes in the business. Dubbed the shy billionaire for the way he avoids publicity, he recently made the news with a $100 million investment in public education to create a new institute dedicated to training school principals and superintendents. That's cool and all. We just think if you bought a Chinook helicopter for a lot less, say $25 million, and landed it on the school roof, the kids would be so much more engaged. You could even ride it between all your stores. The wealthiest 1% of Americans currently controls around 41.52 trillion US dollars. Elon Musk, we're sure, will be taking notes, and we look forward to seeing what Ash does with their inherited family fortune.